All right. I believe we are live, everyone. Let me just give it a second just to make sure everything is working right. Still got that we're waiting. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, Hello, everyone. everyone. <laughs> Let me close that too. All right, welcome everyone to today's live chat event. I am thrilled that you are here, that you tuned in to watch. I know it's gonna be a good one today. Um, so today's topic, it def definitely fits in with our monthly theme of minimal clothing in HBO World, but I feel like it's a topic that every traveler is constantly like trying to perfect. How to pack a light and versatile wardrobe. So it's kind of like the holy grail of packing, right? <laughs> so for today's guest, I've invited a fellow HPL World member on because I just like what she has to say. <laughs> Since joining the new HPL World experience, she has been incredibly helpful. She has been sharing tons of packing light tips and tricks, and a lot of it is things that we subscribe to at her packing list. Um, but after combing through pretty much every comment and post that she's made in the community to prepare for today. <laughs> I can say that she's done a few things a little bit differently than I would, and she uses a few products that I didn't even know about. So, and I really feel like that's the best thing that we can do for you here in HPL World and on her packing list is to show what works for a lot of different people because we all have our own lists of things that we will and won't do, things that we will and won't wear. So we know what works for us, you know, our body types, what we need. And so by showcasing what works for a lot of different people, you can take the best bits and pieces and really have them figure out something that actually works for you. So before I get too far into the intro, why don't we go ahead and welcome today's guest, Rosaline Trambley to the show. Welcome. Hi, Brooke. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's I'm, I'm really humbled that you asked me to uh, participate in this today. Oh. <laughs> well, um, well, it was your first post, I think, that you made in the community. You um, showed a photo of yourself next to these two little bags, and you said, <laughs> this is what I packed for my trip for like eight days, and I even fit a bike helmet in. And I was like, at that moment, I was already like, I need to pick this gal's brain. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good that you're here. Um, so before we go further, why don't you just take a minute to introduce yourself and let us know like where you are and where you're coming from. Sure. Um, my name is Rosaline Trambley, as uh, Brooke mentioned, and I live in the Monterey area. Um, it's on the central coast of California. Um, I'm married and we have three kids in our family. Our youngest is 10, which means she's now at that point where she can actually pack and be responsible for her own stuff, which is huge for those of you who are listening and, and have young kids that you're still packing for. Yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. Um, so you've actually said that you are like, you're like, I'm an ultralight packer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so have you always been an ultralight packer or can you share more about your, your kind of packing journey with us? Yeah, so I wouldn't say I've always been an ultralight packer. I would say I've been a light packer. So on trips that I've been on, whether it's for work or with friends or family, I've definitely been one in the group that tends to pack less than others. And I've been willing and able to get by with, with less stuff. But getting to ultralight was definitely a journey. It took uh, literally years and it was it was a lot of trial and error. Um, it, it didn't just end up that way. And I will confess, I'm probably a minimalist um, just by nature. Um, I do have what I consider to be a minimal uh, minimalist wardrobe at home. Um, so it, pro it wasn't a huge leap for me to to make that step to ultralight packing. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is your like greatest packing light achievement to date? Oh, um, okay. So can I, can I give two of them? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, um, 
I'll give uh, one from work and then one for uh, vacation. Okay. On a work one, I went on a, uh, it was a two day, one night um, conference that I was going to with a number of colleagues. And I show up to the airport with my colleagues and I just have my work tote. And it's just a, you know, a normal size work tote with the two handles and, you know, so on and so forth. And, um, and everyone's looking around, where, where's your luggage? And I said, this is it. Where, where are your clothes? And I said, well, I'm, I'm wearing a, a blue suit. I'll wear the same blue suit the next day. Yeah. And so what I had tucked in there, in addition to my laptop and, you know, things like that was just a, a different top, um, different undergarments, obviously, mm -hmm. um, a different little scarf and, um, and a second pair of foldable ballet flats. Yeah. And so I just swapped out the accessories for the next day. I don't think anyone really notices if you're wearing the same blue suit or gray suit or whatever two days in a row. And that was actually something I had discovered years ago when I was in graduate school. Um, I had a really great opportunity to present at a national conference with my advisor. And she was someone who was nationally known in her field. And I was stressing out about what to wear to this conference. And I see my advisor there the day before we're to present. She's wearing, I, I don't even remember, but it was probably a gray or black suit. And then I see her the next day in the same suit. And I'm thinking to myself, this woman's famous. I mean, famous in her, yeah. in her field. People know her. Surely they're going to remember um, what she's wearing. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But I figured if someone in her place, um, who's recognizable could get away with wearing the same thing two days in a row, then certainly, you know, a regular person could do that. Yeah, um, I think that's, that's kind of like the spotlight effect that we were talking about with Elizabeth, how um, you always yeah. think people notice you more than they really do. I mean, mm -hmm. some people might notice, but yeah, it's, it's not a yeah. big deal. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and then my, my second, um, packing experience that um, I'm pleased with is is the one that you commented on. Mm -hmm. Last summer, I uh, flew to the east from the California West Coast to the East Coast of the United States with my daughter who was then nine. And I said, we're only taking what we can carry on our bodies. Um, she just had a regular her school backpack, actually. And um, we were going someplace where you can do laundry. I mean, you can do laundry anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but so I said, you're just packing like four days worth of clothes or whatever and swim stuff because it was the summertime. And I had two bags with me um, and they were just regular sized backpacks. I did take my my bicycle helmet, as you noted. Um, I was training for a pretty tough um, cycling event last summer and I knew I needed to get in some good miles and that I would be renting a bike at some point. And um, I'm a little obsessive about always wearing my helmet when I cycle. Oh, so smart. I wanted to make yeah. sure I had that with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I probably could have done one bag if I wasn't taking the helmet, but that definitely took up some space. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good feat. Yeah. Um, would you say that there was any sort of event that led, like, did you have any bad experiences that just really made you want to strive to back super light? Oh my gosh. I, where, where do I start? Um, I think, I think we've had all had those experiences where you show up at the airport and your flight has been canceled due to inclement weather or mechanical problems or yep. whatever. And you, you queue up with everyone else, right. To, mm -hmm. to get your turn up, up with the, the gate agent, you finally get up there and they're typing away on their computer for what seems like an eternity. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they finally say, we found you another flight but it's in the other terminal and it leaves in five minutes, right? <laughs> so there is no possibility of you checking luggage because mm. um, they've already loaded the luggage on the plane and you've got to sprint there to the other terminal in five minutes. And, um, and I think we've all been in that situation where you're going, why did I show up to the airport wearing a skirt and heels and this big bag? <laughs> so I've had my share of, of those experiences. Um, there was one event that does stick out in my mind. Um, a number of years ago, my family went to France and our youngest was probably two-ish at the time. So she's still in diapers and in a big giant car seat. 
Yeah. And my our next child was in a, a booster seat. So we just have all this stuff and we've got this giant suitcase packed full of diapers. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, that there'd be no diapers in France or something. And um, we did make the smart decision to not bring a stroller. We had decided we would carry the baby on our backs in a backpack. Mm -hmm. But my poor husband, after you know a red eye flight, is lugging this suitcase with the baby. You know, he's got the baby on his back, and he's lugging this big suitcase up the steps of the metro. Oh. And I was just never, never again. I just didn't want to to be in that position again. It's exhausting. Like it literally exhaust you before you've even set out to sightsee and all that kind of stuff so yeah yeah yeah, definitely all right so why don't we learn a little bit more about the philosophy behind your pecking light success so how do you make it happen yeah so i guess like the overarching principle if you will is um okay this is gonna sound crazy but i wear one outfit I have, I wash one. So in other words, one is being washed while I'm wearing one. Yep. And then I have a spare one. So if, if you're still with us, that's, <laughs> that's basically three outfits that I'm talking about. And then of course I'm, I'm rounding it out. Right. So, you know, they'll, they'll be, um, I'll throw in a piece that's like an outer layer, such as a cardigan. Mm-hmm. Um, there might be a rain piece in there, you know, if, if the weather calls for it. Um, you know, there'd be like a second pair of shoes, but the basic principle is, uh, wear one, wash one, spare one, um, with, you know, some extras. Um, so what that means is regardless of how long a trip is, doesn't matter if it's three days or three weeks, that is my, my principle. I am basically packing three outfits plus a little bit extra. Yeah. Yeah. So your main um, wardrobe for any size trip is basically, it is composed of three outfits. Three outfits. Base. Yeah. But you're probably thinking, that's crazy. Are you really <laughs> wearing the same outfits for like, you know, 15 days in a row? And the answer is actually no, because I'm, um, I put a lot of thought into what those three outfits are mm-hmm. and everything mixes and matches with everything else. So I tend to um, use a lot of basic colors. Um, For me, that color um, tends to be black because that's just um, my go-to neutral color. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'll throw in um, a couple colorful pieces. Like this thing I'm wearing is actually one of the pieces I throw in that has some color to it. Um, And then I I always have like a couple little scarves that add a little bit of color. Um, so mixing and matching is huge. Um, and then I'd say like the, the last part of that is that everything that I bring has to, um, do double duty or sometimes even triple duty. Um, so this top I'm wearing, believe it or not, this is actually a running dress. It is sold as a running dress. Okay. And, um, I do run. So that is how I wear it. Sometimes I just throw it on over like a little pair of um, you know, what are called like bun shorts or, or boy shorts. I'll go for a run. Okay. Um, today I'm actually, I wore this to work, um, not as a running skirt because that wouldn't fit into my work <laughs> environment. Um, I've got it tucked into a longish black skirt, oh, okay. which is a, a very basic black skirt and like a, a ponty knit. Um, and so now it just looks like a little top, mm-hmm. um, and then the other way I've worn it is um, I like taken off the guard again and I pull on like a, t- a tiny little t-shirt over it. Uh-huh. Um, you can like, you know, tie a knot at the side to, to make it look cute. Yeah. And then it looks like it's a skirt. So um, I try and do that with a lot of my pieces. So um, double, like, triple duty. For yeah. Everything that you pack. Like, yeah. Like the, the running shorts that I would wear under this dress, mm-hmm. I have actually swum in them. Makes sense. Um, Yep. And I could sleep in them. So I, I try and get as much mileage, um, out of every piece of clothing. And like, even the, um, the jog bra that I'm wearing, um, also functions as a swim top. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. So for anyone listening right now, 
If you are struggling with packing a light and versatile wardrobe, there's a good chance that you're not following these sort of like tips and mindsets uh, because it can be a little bit scary to think, oh, I'm only gonna pack like basically three outfits for a trip or I'm only gonna pack the same for a trip that's three weeks as I would for a long weekend away. Like that can seem very daunting. But if you want to be able to actually have that super light and versatile wardrobe, that's just one of the steps that you kind of need to subscribe to. You need to, um, I don't know, adopt, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, the whole um, wear one, wash one, spare one. Um, I have a question about that. So mm -hmm. how do you manage washing and airing your clothing if you're only packing, um, you know, a few outfits, is it a chore? No, not at all. Um, so <laughs> maybe I'm a freak in that I, <laughs> I don't mind doing laundry, but, um, I've been in different travel situations. I've been in ones where I actually have access to a, a washer and dryer in the accommodations. Um, so if I'm able to, I will book, um, a place like Airbnb that has a washer and dryer, or at the very least a washer. And that's pretty common in a lot of accommodations that you're booking. Um, also for work trips, I have taken advantage of um, the dry cleaning that's offered in, in hotels where I'm staying for work. Mm -hmm. um, and then my work is, is paying for that. So that's not an, an added cost for me. Okay. Um, but I'll, so I'll tell you one story that I've done regarding sink washing, which sounds crazy, but um, I'm down. It, it actually <laughs> it worked for us. So um, three years ago, uh, my husband and I had the opportunity to travel outside of the country without our kids, which was huge. Um, <laughs> took a lot of logistical planning to, to farm out yeah. the kids to friends and family. Farm out you know, the kids. To... <laughs> um, so we went on a luxury cruise around Iceland from Reykjavik to, to Reykjavik. Mm -hmm. And um, this was a, a pretty nice cruise line. And I said to my husband, I said, we're, we're, we're still packing light. We're just doing carry-on only. So we each had a carry-on roller bag mm -hmm. that would fit in the overhead bin. And then we each had like a, a normal size backpack or, or messenger bag. Yeah. And, um, because it was a nice cruise line, we knew we had to dress nice for dinner every evening. So I had one little black dress that I wore to dinner seven nights in a row, <laughs> which is fine because it's not like you're you're doing a spin class, right? right. You're not going to get sweaty in, yeah. the, in the outfit. My husband had his one nice, um, you know, sports coat and, and slacks. Um, we had two. Um, then we had a, a kind of a smart casual outfit just for kind of hanging out on the cruise ship. And for me, that was a casual uh, dress. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had two uh, outdoor outfits um, because um, pretty much every day on the cruise, we were going to do an outdoor excursion. Mm -hmm. And um, it's pretty rugged there. There are a lot of opportunities to hike. Um, the weather is not very forgiving, so it can be cold and wet. Um, so um, I knew that uh, we'd need to get these clothes washed every day when we, ca we came back because we were pretty physically active during the day. So we'd wear outfit number one. Mm -hmm. And then when we came back, literally the clothes would go off into the shower and I would wash them either in the sink while I was showering or I'd wash them right while I was in the shower. And then I would just pull the little clothesline yep. thing across that was in the shower and they would, they would hang overnight. Um, they were still damp the next morning. So that's when we would put on outdoor, outdoor outfit number two. Right. And then I would take all those clothes that were hanging in the shower and I would carefully hang them on like the hangers that we had available in our, in our little cabin. Um, and then they were, they were dry, um, you know, later that evening. So, and it was just this constant rotation of, of outfit one, outfit two yeah. so um, you in just, the sink. Yeah. So you just tied it into your normal, normal, like showering right. routine and it just became not a hassle at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I didn't even bring special laundry detergent. Um, I just used whatever, uh, 
a soap or shampoo was made available to us because yeah. I figured if it go on my body, then it can <laughs> go on my clothes. Um, so would you say that like uh, the type of fabrics that are you're wearing plays a role in being able to wash and rewear quickly and easily? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was um, I was reflecting back on a trip I did to Europe in my 20s, and I'm, I'm now 52, just to give you kind of an idea of how many years have passed. And um, I was looking at old photos, and I'm wearing mostly cotton and cotton knit, because that was um, a pretty common fabric at the time. And even like the sweater that I was wearing was kind of a, a bulkier um, knit type of, yeah. of sweater. Um, and I tell you, cotton is the enemy <laughs> when you're <laughs> when you're traveling. Yes, it, it is. Um, <laughs> it's heavy. It tends to be bulkier. It wrinkles um, really badly. It takes forever to dry. Yeah. Um, so I pretty much avoid cotton when I when I travel. Yeah. I tend to go for um, fabrics that are. Uh, I guess like the sports material, yeah. um, you know, the tech fabrics that are, are quick dry. Yeah. 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 So fabrics do play a big role in you being able to pack oh, light. Oh, huge. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, another question I have oh, is. Oh, and Marina Wool yeah. on that, on that topic. Yeah. Yeah. That's the bomb. Yeah. Do love me some Marina Wool. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any like favorite, uh, like brands? like icebreaker or anything like that that you recommend? I do. So I'm, um, so for my, my clothing, I not only go for stuff that's, uh, that's functional. Um, but I'm also, um, I, I really like to think about the impact on the environment and on people when clothing is produced. So I do um, research into companies mm -hmm. before I make purchases just to make sure they're paying their, their workers sustainable um, wages and that they're not harming the environment. Um, so having said that, um, one of the companies I really like is Patagonia. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's, that is actually built into their, their mission is to, to do no harm to the environment. Um, but their clothing is really well made. Um, it's very functional. It is um, a lot of it is intended for outdoor mm -hmm. active, purposes and they they really stand behind their name so you could you know tear something a year later and send it in and they'll they'll replace it a year later that's a good warranty that, yeah that's good. yeah um and i have I, every, everything from them from like a very packable down jacket to rain jackets that pack up into like teeny tiny little packets mm -hmm. to hiking pants um that are super lightweight and quick drying yet you could still throw on a blazer and and go out to, to dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so how do you, you kind of already shared this already talking about your dress and how you wore it to work, but like, how do you make yourself feel like you're wearing something different, even though you're not really wearing something different all the time? Or does that affect you at all? <laughs> I don't think it affects me yeah. that much. So <laughs> I might be unusual in that regard. Um, during uh, shelter in place, um, I would literally, and actually even before shelter in place, I would experiment with wearing the same outfit to work um, five days in a row. Mm -hmm. So I actually wore the same black dress to work. Um, this is before shelter in place. Uh, five days in a row, I did wear different shoes every day. Um, and I did wear like a different scarf or a different cardigan or, you know, I accessorized it in some way. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't, I never got bored of it. And maybe it's because I was accessorizing it in different ways. And so when you travel, that is that kind of like what you do as well? Just like different scarves? I do. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, when you're traveling, you're, you're usually breaking up your traveling way. So like one day might be like a super active day where you're wearing your, your active outdoorsy outfit. And then later on you get back and you change into something a little bit nicer for dinner. And then the next day, maybe you're going to a museum. So you're wearing 
you know, something a little bit different than you wore the, the previous day. Yeah. So it's not like when you look back at your pictures, you're like, oh my God, for five days in a row, I was wearing the exact same thing. Yeah. And it's kind of like even on your cruise, when you wore the same um, little black dress every evening, it's like, you're probably only wearing it for a couple hours in the evening. So it wasn't like you were wearing it all day, every day, and therefore probably didn't care as much that it was the same dress really. So yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have a good system. Um, just, yeah. So, uh, we can kind of, um, uh, put this more into perspective. You, you basically, um, you pack a lot for trips that include a lot of outdoor activity or physical activity. Mm -hmm. And then you also like to have nice dinners. So you're doing like a combination mm -hmm. usually when you're packing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make that clear. So we know what kind of trip you are actually like talking about when we're talking about all these different tips. And this is like the hardest kind of trip actually is what you do. <laughs> yeah. And that's just, that's kind of how I like to, uh, to travel and just even when I'm not traveling, when I'm at home, I'm, I'm fairly active, mm -hmm. but I, um, I'm, I'm a, a triathlete in my spare time. In my spare time. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but you know, then I like to, I like to clean up and, and go out, you know, wine tasting or, mm -hmm. or to a nice dinner. Yeah. So you're doing... I just don't like it to be, you know, this big, I don't like to fuss over that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Breakfast at Tiffany. Yeah. With Audrey Hepburn. So Audrey Hepburn is my, my style icon. Oh. And there are a couple scenes in the movie. One is at the beginning. Um, and one is towards the end where she's just like completely a mess and frazzled. And she throws on an LBD, a little black dress. And she's completely pulled together. Mm -hmm. And that is how I like to go. I like to be in the situation where it's like, I'm doing this active outdoorsy thing, then I clean up mm -hmm. and then I can go to dinner and no one even knew that I was frazzled. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had last year I had, um, or a couple of years ago, I had done a, a triathlon and then I literally changed out of my triathlon suit in the porta potty and threw on a little <laughs> dress with a pink scarf and jumped out and said, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go to lunch now to celebrate. Oh my gosh. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good little story. Uh, I don't recommend changing. In no, I was going to say that had been happen, difficult. No. <laughs> that's like worse than airplane bathroom changing. Like. Yes. <laughs> but if that's but the, all you've got, you know, but the fact that you did it, that's impressive. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. So, um, we've kind of already shared a lot of your tips and tricks and secrets, but do you have any other secrets for packing light and verse and having a versatile wardrobe tips and products? Yeah. Um, so I'll start with products. Okay. Um, shoes, shoes are so important i think of of all the the things that you wear on your body that's probably the most important um because when you're yeah. traveling you're probably on your feet a lot right yes. you're, you're walking around um you know even if you're like just going to museums you're still on your feet a lot and it's one of those things it's like it's got to fit well otherwise you're in pain um and then just you know for practical reasons um walking on cobblestones, mm. not, oh, gosh, not every yes. shoe is, is suited for walking on cobblestones. No. Um, and you know, you can, you can be without a jacket and you can go into any place and just pick up like a cheap, you know, sweatshirt or whatever, if you're cold, but that's a lot harder to do if you don't have the right shoes. Yeah. So yeah, that was one of those things. Like once I got my footwear mm -hmm. dialed in for me now, it, um, everything just kind of seemed to snap into place after that. So what footwear are you packing? I know that you have a little bit of an obsession with teaks. <laughs> I, I love teaks. I, I discovered teaks about three and a half years ago. I had been having, um, I used to wear heels a lot to work because uh -huh. I wanted to look professional yeah. and I would wake up in the middle of the night screaming in pain. Like my, my, uh -huh. my calves were just um, in pain 
And um, I mean, like yelling expletives in the middle of the night. And my husband's going, what, why, why are you wearing those shoes? You know, that's causing the pain. I said, but I, I want to look cute. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I finally, um, I had heard about teaks. Um, they were on the higher end for me in terms of what I wanted to spend on a pair of shoe. I literally obsessed for months, months. Wow. I can't tell you how many times I visited the website. Um, my best friend had already owned a couple pairs of teaks and she finally said, just quit talking about it. Just buy a pair, try it on. As long as you don't wear them outside the house, you can return them if they don't work out. Yeah. Um, so the pair of shoes arrived. Um, I think it was a, a Friday. My son had a track meet um, at the middle school. I put these shoes on and they were like buttery soft on my feet. I, I walked out the door, went to the track meet and I just like, I never looked back. Nice. And so over the next year or so, I like slowly got rid of um, my pairs of heels. Um, I still own two pairs, which are sitting on the tippy top shelf in my closet. <laughs> and I have not worn them in two, three years. Wow. So I wear teaks um, almost exclusively. Uh, and I've worn them with everything from a fancy, um, a fancy gown that I wore to a fundraiser mm -hmm. to, you know, a very casual outfit. Um, so that yeah. is a go to shoe when I travel because they fold up yes. into this little little yep. package I love you teaks. know I enjoy yeah. packing them they are great yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I um, I bought my mom a pair like I have gotten myself like several pairs so I yeah, yeah I've worn them everywhere and I don't complain about my feet hurting which is super important because I have plantar fasciitis and um you know these actually don't hurt my feet so it's it's great I don't yeah yeah, what's really nice about teaks, I mean, in addition to the, the comfort aspect, which is so important, they have such a slim profile yep. um, that they don't like, they don't sc scream out at you as like the focal point of your outfit. Yeah. And so as a result, you can wear them with anything, right? Yeah. Because they're just, they're just, they're there. Um, but they're not screaming like, look at me. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you can wear them totally casual or you can dress them up. Like, I've worn them to weddings, you know. I've gone um, to business meetings. I've gone to the pub, you know, just everyday things. So they're nice. They're And yeah. so they pack up super small, so it's a really versatile shoe. Takes up almost no space in your luggage compared to other shoes. And yeah. so that's, like, one really good tip for packing light. Finding a really light small shoe that is comfortable and um, can be worn in many different settings. Yeah. So. Uh, and so my other shoe that I really like is um, made by On Running. It's, I believe it's a Swiss brand. Okay. Um, I actually have, hold on, I've, I've <laughs> got a shoe right here. Um, what I like about them is that they also have a pretty mellow profile um so they're not screaming running shoe when you're looking at them that's nice as well it just looks like a little shoe yeah. um uh there's there's nothing worse than wearing these like obnoxious sneakers and you're walking somewhere and it's just like your outfit is screaming american tourist <laughs> <laughs> and one of my goals when i travel is to just sort of like blend in with the locals and not mm. you know not like stick out so much them. you're probably going to yeah. stick out you're going to be american you can just tell by looking at people you know no matter what <laughs> but you don't want to stick out that bad yeah <laughs> yeah i don't want to be you know um pickpockets and so mm, forth yeah, are don't. going to target certain people i want to be one of the less targeted yeah. groups among the pickpockets yeah yeah so i like those running shoes because i I literally um, can put them on, do a 10K race, and yet they they don't scream running shoe, so then I can just wear them with a pair of slacks and a blazer, and it looks decent mm -hmm. enough. Nice. Okay, so tip number one is, yeah, like we said, find your 
footwear. Find the footwear that works for you. That is going to be key so you feel good and you have stuff that doesn't take up a lot of space in your luggage. Okay, any other kind of secrets or tips or products that you love? Um, I'm gonna shift gears and talk about uh, tips in terms of like the, the packing and organization. Okay. So I think planning and organization is really important if, if you wanna do light or ultralight. Because mm -hmm. um, you can't just throw any three outfits in. I mean, it has to be carefully thought out in terms of will this work for the weather? Will all these pieces coordinate? Yeah. And you know, and and all of all of that. Um, what I did, um, which is was really helpful for me, is I made a generic master packing list, and like one side actually has like my for pleasure travel, mm -hmm. so it's like more casual stuff, and then on the other side is work, yeah, um, stuff. But then there's actually overlap between my two lists because there were a couple pieces that I would pack regardless of whether I'm traveling for work or for pleasure. Um, so for instance, I have um, a little black t-shirt, a basic black t-shirt that can be worn under a work blazer or a cardigan, um, or it can just be worn you know, by itself casually. Yeah. I, um, I almost always bring my gray merino wool long sleeve top wherever I go. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much like my uniform piece because it just works in so many climates and so many settings. Okay. Um, so having that makes it so um, much easier. Um, I can pretty much pack in 15 minutes. So if I got a call saying, you've got to be on a plane. Wouldn't it's... you love that right now? <laughs> <laughs> I know about right now. <laughs> yeah. But um, the other thing is um, my toiletry bag is always packed. So I have a, a TSA approved uh, clear plastic bag. It's the TSA size um, and it is always fully stocked. It is um, the bag that I use when I go work out. Um, so it's that way I, I know it's like constantly replenished and so forth. That's good. That's smart. Oh. Yeah, so it's just literally just grabbing it from its spot in the drawer and plopping it into my my bag. Yeah, so I wanted to talk more about the packing list that you shared because you did share a photo in the community, and for everyone watching, I will put the photo into the event so you can see it, um, where she has her master packing list laid out. Um, and it's just... I got to flip to it in my book because I... Super simple. Um, but, like, a couple of things that I notice is... Um, you're not packing, well, we've already talked about it. You're not packing like five tops, three bottoms, that sort of thing. You are thinking like I have three main outfits plus yep. a few extra. So that's just like a key and you can see it listed out in the way that she has it planned. Um, another thing I wanted to comment on is that you're probably, these are, this is, these are items that you are wearing in your daily life, right? As well. It's not just travel clothing. The, these pieces you know work for you. So you have these already picked out. You know what works. Yeah, you know, that's that's an interesting point, Brooke. I used to have a, a much larger wardrobe at home than I currently have. Mm -hmm. And I, I went on a journey the last few years, um, not a physical journey, um, a journey the last few years where I decluttered my closet. Yeah. And I realized um, that I used to have my work clothes hanging over here, my casual clothes hanging over here. Um, and as I started to declutter, it occurred to me that why do I need to have two separate sets? There can be overlap. So that that gray merino top, for instance, can definitely be worn to work as long as I accessorize it properly. Exactly. Um, similarly, there are work clothes that I can wear out to dinner or whatever. Um, so it's it's not like you have to have all these separate things. And then it's the same thing with, with travel clothes. I don't have like this separate section of my closet that's travel clothes. I just grab from the all the clothes. You I always have wear have. the stuff that you always yeah. wear and you know, that works. So you, it's easier to pack a bag. And not only that, you, you've also invested in a lot of clothing items that are made of better fabrics that help when you travel. So not just cotton things, but things made from merino and 
um, sportswear, um, that sort of thing. So having your home wardrobe that way just makes it super easy for you to be able to pack light. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was one thing I definitely wanted to comment on. And so you're not really reinventing the wheel every time you pack your bag. Oh, no, I would say I'm making minor tweaks. So the, the basics are there, um, but depending on where I'm going and what the climate's going to be and what activities, then I might make some changes. But it's it's the same basic things, which is a pair of pants that can be dressed up or down, exactly. my spare thing, and then a, a dress that can be dressed up or down. And that covers pretty much any situation I'm going to encounter. Yep. Yep, that's really all it is. It's not rocket science, is it? It's just yeah. taking the time to figure out what works for you, investing in the right pieces, um, you know, over time, and then, you know, being comfortable with, you know, picking out the same things and re-wearing them and not trying to reinvent the wheel every time you pack it back. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, what was the biggest game changer for you in terms of being able to pack a light and, and versatile wardrobe? I, th I think I probably al already mentioned this in one of. Oh. Uh oh, <laughs> she just locked up for me. <gasps> oh no. All right, everyone, if you're watching, give me just a second. I'm going to try and reconnect with Rosaline here. <laughs> of all times, right? <laughs> We're just about done. So we have just a couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. It says she's not online. <laughs> all right, give it just another minute. I think there was a network connection issue, so I'll give her a second to hopefully get back on. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really, I like a lot of the stuff that Rosaline has shared because, you know, if, if you can't, it just proves that like, if you can subscribe to being comfortable wearing things over and over again, um, if you think about packing in terms of having just a few outfits for no matter your trip length, it's going to, you're, you're not going to have a difficult time being able to pack light. And if you choose pieces that mix and match and that are made of, you know, special fabrics and you know that works for you, then um, you're going to have a versatile wardrobe. So that, that's really important. And I'm not sure if she's coming back. Okay, um, I think we're going to have to end it there because I'm not seeing her back online yet. I'm not sure. Very, very sorry for this little interruption. But like I said, we were just about done. Um, still not back. I'll see if I can message her. She said, Skype quit on me. Okay, hold on just a second.
nothing, nothing on the Skype. All right, everyone, I think I'm just going to have to call it. But thank you so much for tuning in. I think we got a lot of really good information. Um, I'll update the event with images of her master packing list. I'll update it with some of the products that she mentioned. And um, she's still trying to get into Skype and it's not working. <laughs> um, and, and all the photos and stuff that we've kind of talked about. Um, within the chat and I hope that you guys enjoyed it all and I will see you next time so sorry about the technical difficulties <laughs> all right take care everyone bye Oh wait, she's back. <laughs> uh. Hello. Hi, Rosal. <laughs> I just kind of said goodbye, but the video is still rolling. So, uh, if you're here, you can turn your video on. I have no idea what happened. Your video is still off. If you want to turn that on, there you are. <laughs> It was like network connection issue or something like that. I don't know. Gotta love technology. Yeah. Okay. So if everyone, I kind of said goodbye. So I think people are going <laughs> to pit her off. I was just like, oh, I think we're going to end it. Um, but this is good because then, um, yeah, we can finish it. I only had a couple more questions, a couple of questions to kind of start to wrap it up. Um, but this, yeah. <laughs> technology, why today? <laughs> You're back though. Okay, great. So the biggest game changer for you, you've already, you, you started saying, but then it kind of went, no. Oh, uh, definitely it was the, the shoes. Oh, the shoes. Okay. Once, once I got my shoes dialed in, I feel like everything else fell into place. Um, before I, I had shoes that like worked like 80% of the time, but then 10% of the time it was like, and there's just nothing worse than that feeling of like, you want to look really cute for that, that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Where and, um, and then you look at the pictures after and you're like, wow, I just look like a dork with those shoes that I'm wearing with that outfit. <laughs> um, so once I found the shoes that were both comfortable as well as functional and then looked great with anything yeah um then it just made me feel um i don't know like i could wear anything and do anything and my feet would take me where i i needed to go that yeah that's very interesting that you say that but yeah that's that's awesome that's a very good tip i like that um what would you recommend to others who struggle to pack a light and versatile wardrobe? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. So I think now is actually a really good time to practice. Um, for a lot of us, we're restricted from travel. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are doing staycations instead of vacations. So what I would recommend is just try this out over a weekend. Maybe you have two to three days in a row where you um, don't have to go to work or, or whatever. And you could plan out what your, your wardrobe is going to be. Actually pack it, see how that works, and then commit to wearing it for a couple days. And it's um, it's fail safe because if something doesn't work out, you, you still have your closet there at home. Yeah. But go about you know your usual errands or whatever you, you would normally do on those couple days, just wearing those clothes to, to kind of test things out. Yeah, it's a great time to test the waters right now. So yeah, yeah. good tip. Plus um, it kind of gets you out of that funk from not actually being able to travel. That's um, true. And, and I actually did this last month when our um, summer vacation got canceled due to COVID. I decided I was so depressed that we, we couldn't get on a plane that I decided I was going to pack my bag anyway. So I, I packed my backpack and then I said, well, since I've packed it, I might as well just wear these clothes for the next nine days. And so I lived out of my backpack for nine days, even though I was at home and I could have <laughs> opened my closet and it was actually kind of fun. 
Yeah, that definitely helps uh, put a different spin on the day to day when we're stuck at home in lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> we, would, we would go places and I'd be like, we went to the nursery to buy some plants for our yard. And I said, look, la lavender, we're in the fields of Provence. <laughs> and so I took a selfie in front of this lavender and I said, here I am in my pretend, you know, vacation okay. in Provence. That's so cute. <laughs> That's so fun. And it helped you kind of find the, the fun in every day as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wrap it up. But my last question is... We're always striving to pack smarter in this community. What's next? I feel like you kind of got your clothing down, but what are you still working on improving? Oh, that's a that's a great question. Um, I do have the clothing down. Um, you know, I, I guess what I would it, what needs improving is going to some place where it is considerably colder. Because I realize um, what I the system that I have right now works for probably high 40s to, you know, into the 80s. Um, actually, could even work hotter. I would just pack um, like lighter stuff. Yeah. But I, to be honest, I don't know um, how well my my tiny bag would work if I was going someplace where I had to pack heavier, you know, bigger bigger coats, you know, boots, thing, things like that. So that might be a that might be taking it to the next level for me is trying to figure out how to make it work for a, a cold weather climate. Well, I think you have your challenge now. I do. <laughs> you have the time to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just a, a couple smart layers and you'd probably be good to go. Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Um, I wanted to ask you, because I did share it on the screen, but where can people find you online if they want to see more about you and your daily life and travels? I am on Instagram, and my Instagram name is Dr. underscore Pangloss underscore in underscore Eden. Dr. Pangloss in Eden. And what does so, that, what is that for? What is that for? Yeah, what um, is the name? I was going to ask you ah, about that. <laughs> so I live in Carmel, California. Mm -hmm. um, it is one of the cities in, in the Monterey Bay. And it has been described as an Eden of sorts. It's it's really lovely here in terms of the, the beauty and, and the climate. So that's the, the Eden reference. Um, and Dr. Pangloss is one of my favorite literary characters. Oh. So if, if, if there's anyone who is a French literature major that's watching this, they're probably chuckling at the, the reference. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, and I already checked out your Instagram, and you have a lot of photos of you, um, I think, with the bag that you take when you travel um, mm -hmm. and you being outdoorsy and active and showing what you're wearing. So it could be very helpful for people to get a bigger picture of, um, what we talked about here today. So everyone check oh, it out. I should make a final comment about the bag. Um, it is leather, uh -huh. which a lot of people would say that is crazy to travel with leather because mm -hmm. leather is heavy, right? Mm -hmm. And it scratches. So, um, if weight is an issue, if, getting your bag marked up is an issue. Leather is probably not the right product. I, I like leather because of the, the aesthetics. And I talked earlier about kind of wanting to blend in with the locals and not stick out so much as tourists. And um, just having a, a nice leather bag just makes me feel like I'm you know, a student in whatever country I'm, I'm visiting and not necessarily a, a tourist. Yeah. Yeah, it classes you up just a little bit more than your <laughs> typical travel backpack, I guess, or school backpack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Good tip. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful tips with us today. I appreciate it so much. Thank um, you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, and yeah, have a great day. Bye. Bye, everyone.